Renal tubular acidosis, or RTA, is the result of an inability of the kidney to appropriately acidify the urine. The subsequent accumulation of acid in the body creates a non-anion gap hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. In this animation, renal physiology will be reviewed, as well as the various types of renal tubular acidosis. Let's zoom in on the kidney, where filtration and reabsorption of important elements takes place. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. Let's take a closer look at the proximal convoluted tubule, or PCT, where most of the filtrate from the Bowman's capsule gets reabsorbed back into circulation. Normal ion transport within the proximal tubule will now be reviewed. Here, many of the ions and molecules that are important to the body are reabsorbed, including bicarbonate, sodium, potassium, and chloride, among others. Epithelial cells of the proximal tubule allow sodium to enter the cell and hydrogen to leave the cell through a channel known as the sodium-hydrogen antiport or exchanger and labeled here as NHE3. This channel is located on the luminal side of a proximal tubule cell, placing it in direct contact with the filtrate after it passes through the Bowman's capsule. Bicarbonate is unable to move from the lumen across the proximal tubule epithelial cells. In the lumen, hydrogen ions bind to bicarbonate to form carbonic acid. Carbonic anhydrase 4 then cleaves carbonic acid to form water and carbon dioxide, which is able to easily diffuse across the membrane into the epithelial cell. Inside the epithelial cell, the opposite occurs. Carbonic anhydrase II forms carbonic acid by binding water and carbon dioxide. Carbonic acid will then dissolve to form hydrogen and bicarbonate. Next, hydrogen ions leave the cell through the sodium-hydrogen antiport in exchange for sodium to enter the lumen. Furthermore, Bicarbonate is reabsorbed into the blood through sodium bicarbonate co-transport channels, or NBC1, followed by sodium. Thus, for every one hydrogen ion leaving the cell to enter the lumen, one bicarbonate ion is reabsorbed into the blood. Sodium also enters the blood in exchange for potassium via the sodium-potassium ATPase pump. Potassium from the cell freely diffuses through potassium channels into the blood due to a concentration gradient. Now, let's proceed to the next important section of the nephron that affects ion transport, the collecting duct. Principal cells and intercalated cells line the collecting duct. First, Let's look at normal ion transport across principal cells of the collecting duct. Aldosterone enters the principal cell and stimulates the sodium channel to increase influx of sodium from the lumen. This creates a negative electrical charge on the side of the lumen. Aldosterone also activates sodium-potassium ATPase, causing it to pump sodium into the blood in exchange for potassium. Drawn by the negative electrical charge in the lumen, potassium will leave the cell to enter the lumen via a potassium pump labeled here as R-O-M-K. Now, let's look at normal ion transport within the intercalated cells of the collecting duct. Inside intercalated cells, aldosterone stimulates hydrogen ATPase, which along with the negative charge in the collecting duct lumen, causes hydrogen ions to exit intercalated cells into the lumen. Carbonic anhydrase II binds water and carbon dioxide to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid breaks down into hydrogen and bicarbonate. The hydrogen exits through the hydrogen-potassium ATPase in exchange for potassium. 
the newly formed bicarbonate will be reabsorbed into the blood in exchange for chloride by way of a bicarbonate chloride or anion exchanger channel. Chloride is then reabsorbed back into the blood either passively due to a concentration gradient or actively as it is pumped back into the blood with potassium via the potassium chloride pump. In the collecting duct lumen, hydrogen ions bind to monohydrogen phosphate to form dihydrogen phosphate. They also bind to ammonia to form ammonium. Both dihydrogen phosphate and ammonium are excreted in the urine. In renal tubular acidosis type 1, the distal nephron is unable to secrete hydrogen ions. As mentioned before, carbonic anhydrase type 2 binds carbon dioxide and water to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid breaks down into hydrogen and bicarbonate. Diminished hydrogen ATPase activity is the most common cause of RTA type 1, resulting in hydrogen unable to be secreted. Many different disorders can cause diminished hydrogen ATPase activity including mutation and immunologic injury, which occurs in Schrogen syndrome. Impaired function of hydrogen potassium ATPase can also cause RTA type 1. When the pump is impaired, potassium reabsorption is decreased, leading to hypokalemia. Now, let's focus on what happens when the anion exchanger pump fails. Mutation of the anion exchanger pump, which is the chloride bicarbonate pump, leads to decreased bicarbonate reabsorption, causing hypobicarbonatemia and subsequent acidosis. Renal tubular acidosis type 4 is associated with aldosterone deficiency or resistance. Within principal cells, a lack of aldosterone decreases sodium reabsorption which leads to an increased positive charge in the lumen. Lack of aldosterone will also affect sodium potassium ADPase, which causes decreased potassium secretion, resulting in hyperkalemia. Within intercalated cells, hypoaldosteronemia and increased positive charge in the lumen leads to decreased hydrogen ion secretion, resulting in acidosis. Renal tubular acidosis type 2. Renal tubular acidosis type 2 results from a defect in bicarbonate reabsorption within the proximal tubule, which leads to urinary bicarbonate wasting. Let's take a closer look at the proximal tubule. This defect can be caused by a dysfunction of the sodium-hydrogen antiporter, which results in a decrease of sodium reabsorption and hydrogen secretion. Decreased hydrogen secretion causes a decrease in bicarbonate reabsorption. Therefore, bicarbonate is wasted in the urine. Let's take another look at the formation of carbonic acid, followed by its breakdown into hydrogen and bicarbonate. Hydrogen exits the cell into the lumen in exchange for sodium which normally gets reabsorbed with bicarbonate through the sodium bicarbonate co-transporter NBC1. Impairment of this channel, however, can also cause proximal renal tubular acidosis type 2 by decreasing bicarbonate reabsorption, which leads to hypobicarbonatemia and thus acidosis.